Kittensy here, the Frugal Crafter, playing with a really fun new paper um, that's made out of stone. Isn't that crazy? This is a brand new product that's being developed by Green Sneakers, and I'll have a link below uh, so you can find out a little bit more about it, but basically it's 80% stone and 20% resin, and um, I get a chance to play with it, so what I'm going to do here, what I've already started doing is just sketching out a... Um, just a little design here. I'm just doing some cone flowers and you can kind of see how easily my pen just glides across the surface. And do some little cross hatching here. You know, just very, very simple. Um, but it's super smooth. It's kind of funny when you feel it. It kind of gives you the heebie-jeebies because it's got this really it's smooth and toothy. It's very strange. So I am, this is the only piece of paper of this I have. So I've actually grabbed a bunch of supplies and I'm going to start just uh, kind of coloring on this and we're going to see how it accepts different media. Um, I was told that it doesn't do well with heat. So um, I'm going to try to hopefully put this together in some way where I won't need to stop and dry my paper because um, I don't want it to melt. <laughs> that wouldn't be good. Um, so the first thing I'm going to start uh, with, I think, is I'm going to use some markers. And I've got two different kinds of markers here. I've got watercolor markers and I've got um, alcohol-based markers. So I'm going to start in with the watercolor markers. I have no idea how this is going to blend, but I'm going to start in on some of these leaves with, um, let's go with a dark marker. We'll go with a medium. These are Faber-Castell pit markers, pit pens, rather I should say. I don't notice them blending really well, which is surprising because I thought that with these uh, on this really smooth paper it might blend really well, but it does seem to want to uh, grab the color. I can blend if I layer it. If I, go, um, if I go light to dark here, I should just leave my caps off. Let's see, if I start off with a light color and prime it, and then I go in with my medium, that blends pretty well. I've never used this before, so you are learning right along with me here. The one with the darks. Add a little shadow where that overlaps. I have no idea how this is going to come out. I just basically want to play with this, um, this paper here. That's kind of fun. Yeah, look at that. I kind of like that. You can see it's really vibrant. Because the paper's so white and it's not porous, there's no bleed through on the back. We'll have to see how the alcohol markers do with that. Um, I'll do a couple leaves here as well. I think I'll start it with a light. It's kind of weird when you color on it. It kind of, um, you can feel definitely a tooth to it. I'll be interested to see how the pastels work. Ooh, those colors just show up so brightly on that paper. It's really nice. I'll blend it around a little bit. It almost feels like that Yupo paper, except it's not quite as slick. Have to apologize for the furnace. It is 53 degrees in my studio. I am freezing. The furnace, of course, does nothing to heat up my studio because it's warming up the rest of the house. The upstairs, but unfortunately, you have to listen to it. Here we go. Oh, I really like the way that looks. It looks very watercolory with these uh, water-based markers. All right, I'm gonna try some of these um, alcohol markers now. Let's do the same thing. Let's start in with our lighter color. Here I have a Copic. Uh, let's do this one up here. Let's do a couple really quickly, a couple petals really quickly. That really felt good coloring with that. Go in with this medium color. Oh, they're blending quite well. Actually, those two colors really aren't that different from each other. Let's go finish coloring in those really quick. We'll go in this dark. Prismacolor, I'll call marker, the pit on the back. I'm working quite quickly just to make sure I'll have time to blend. We'll go back in with that light brush end. Um, the alcohol markers are not blending quite as well as the water-based markers. It does seem to just get in there and grab. Let's um, try some of the greens here on the stem. I do love how vibrant it is on there. Um, the neat thing about this paper, and I think we're going to see notice it a little bit more when we get into the watercolor.
watercolor uh, demonstration is that it doesn't buckle. It's still completely flat. Um, I'm seeing no uh, no bleed through from where I use the alcohol markers either, so that's going to be really good uh, for card makers. Although I don't know, it's a, it's a fairly thick paper, but it's not very rigid, so I don't know if it'd be suitable for doing a one layer card. I think it'd be a little too flimsy. But there's no bleed through, so um, that's something to be aware of. Um, I think I want to try some watercolor pencils. I got these aqua tones here. Let's try a few of the greens and yellows. And now it will be interesting to see how these blend because, um, let's see. Okay, so I'm trying to color with the uh, with the pencils. I don't feel like a lot of color is coming off the pencils. I chose my Aquatones because they're softer than um, my Ink Tense or my regular Derwent colored pencils. But let's just see when we add a little water how that works. I've got my water bucket here. I'm going to find a place to set that down. My uh, table is quite crowded at the moment. Let's just see, add some water to that. All right, I'm not loving the watercolor pencils. They're, they're just a little too a little too faded. My sketch I did with a pig with a microns and it does seem like that ink is running a little bit there now that I put the water on it. So let's just see how watercolor works since I've got that um, already wet there. That's kind of neat. It's behaving a lot like the Yupo paper. Um, Let's just go right in with, oh yeah, watercolor work is working quite well on that. And um, I'll do some more uh, vigorous washes and we'll see how, uh, how it handles having a lot of water on it. It's made from rock, rocks, it's probably gonna be all right. Let me, um, I'm gonna grab a couple of watercolor crayons behind me. Pardon the, uh, the boring video here. I got my Karen Dash, let's try. Let's try some of these, if I can get the container open and uh, find an applicable color. Oh, good video, isn't it? <laughs> good grief, I really should clear off my table before starting any projects. All right, so I got some colors here. I think I'm gonna grab, um, let's grab a couple shades of green, stay with the same colors that I've been using. Just to set that down. All right, sorry about that. Totally unprofessional, oh well. <laughs> what you come to expect. All right, I'm gonna color that in. Now the watercolor crayons will stick a lot better to that paper. There's a little bit of water on my brush already. There, the watercolor crayons do work quite well. Now let's see, if I go back over that where it's wet, I can release some more color. Okay, watercolor crayons worked good. The pencils, not so much because there's just not enough tooth to grab it apparently. All right, well, I think I would like to try a watercolor wash in the background. Let's see how that works. Um, let me just wet some of the area. That's generally how I begin a wash. I just kind of wet an area. Oh, I also want to see if the other color is going to lift up if I paint over it. Nope, now look at that. The um, Where I painted that, it's not lifting, it's not moving, and that would be the watercolor marker that I had there. Okay, now this is the other thing I'm kind of noticing is that it almost seems like the paper is absorbing my water immediately after I paint it in. That's kind of strange. Um, it, it is kind of like painting on a rock. <laughs> it's very weird. Um, all right, so I'm gonna do a wash. I think I'll use a little ultramarine blue. Let's see how the colors go. They don't want to run uncontrollably. This would be kind of fun for an art journal, I think, because um, your pages aren't going to curl on you, and it doesn't seem to be bleeding through at all. I think I'll just dab in some of the colors, like there's plants in the background that are maybe out of focus and far away. Do that with some yellow, too. Oh, this is fun. Oh, yeah, yeah, I like that. Let me throw in um, a little bit more of a wash over here. I'm just kind of going around. Actually, I don't even think I need to go around. I think I can kind of go over everything, with the exception of my Micron pen that's bleeding and I think that's because everything is kind of sitting on the surface of this paper it's not absorbing in like it does in general you know wood based paper because I've used these microns on um, on watercolor paper and sketching paper and I've never had them run before with water so I just think it's a situation where the uh, paint is all sitting on top and uh, not absorbing in so that's something you might want to keep in mind um, I don't notice any, let's see, where did I use the alcohol inks? What ones were alcohol? Oh, was that the alcohol inks there? Let's see, the watercolor. 
that's not running too bad. Maybe it was the, that must have been the alcohol inks up there. I thought that was a watercolor marker, but I'm mistaken. First time for everything, right? <laughs> All right, throwing in some of this color. Hither and yon. And I think I'll throw in some greens down here just to kind of fill in. Ooh, that's nice and vivid. Yeah, it does behave a lot like the Yupo paper, which is a synthetic paper. Uh, it's a little bit different. It's not as slippery. This definitely has more tooth on it, and I'll be very excited to try the pastel. Um, and I think, I think I will go right into the pastels, because I think I've got enough dry area in there to work on it. Um, I really like the, the way the markers worked on it. I like the way the watercolors work on it. So, pastels right here. I'm not crazy about the watercolor pencils on it. Watercolor crayons, however, were soft and they worked, worked quite well. So these are just some inexpensive pastels. And let's try on some of those uh, cone flowers there. I think I want to use some orange and some brown. Maybe this little reddish color. All right, so let's start in with that medium tone, maybe throw that in the middle. Throw a couple of these. Oh yeah, look at that. The pastel is really sticking to the paper very, very well. Go in with my highlight. I think this would be a superb pastel paper, actually. You wouldn't think it, because it feels so smooth, except for the heebie-jeebiness but it really grabs a pastel. Um, you probably would want to fix it with something, just like a little um, spray of fixative, a hairspray, just because I, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't have the really deep ridges and valleys that a uh, general pastel paper would have, so you'll want to keep that in mind. Let's see, what do we have for time? Oh, only 11 minutes? Oh, wow, that, this has been fun. Um, I'm going to throw those other two in here as well. I really like this for pastel. I think this would be, it's just, it feels like you're painting on velvet. It's really, really nice. And what the world needs is some more velvet paintings, don't you think? There we go. Oh, I like that. I, I don't know about you, but I do. Okay. And then why don't I try some of the petals on that with that, uh, with those pastels too. I'm really liking the pastels on this. So color, and the, uh, the cut, the painting is still so vibrant because the, um, because of the the smooth white, bright, bright white surface, and the fact that the paper is not absorbing any of the color, all the color is staying on top. So I really haven't used that much media. It's all just kind of right there on the top. Oh my gosh, I just love the pastel. I'm kind of I'm gonna go over these marker areas because I like the pastel so much. So pretty. Oh, yep. Yep, pastel. Pastel's a clear winner for this, I think. I think this is what I would use this paper for. So these notebooks are coming out with this paper in it, and I believe it's going to be called the Da Vinci Notebook, made of stone paper. Very new and exciting, and it will be available from Green Sneakers in a couple of months, but there'll be some... Uh, I will link below to information on that if you want to go check it out or reserve some or um, pledge towards its funding or whatever. Put that right in the video description for you. Oh yeah, pastels definitely. This is just a pleasure to paint with pastels. I'm dragging it through my wet uh, paint. <laughs> oh, it's fun. I feel like a kid again. I'm normally so serious. All oh, right, look at that. It's all these colors and goodness and oh, this is fun. And we got a little bumblebee there. Let's get a little bumblebee in. <laughs> nice. <laughs> what a mess. <laughs> oh, I'm having way too much fun here. A little stinger in there. There, bee out there making a living. And let's see, bee wings. Let's do, oh, I feel like a little turquoise. Let's a little turquoise in there. It doesn't have to be realistic because it's your painting. It's your world. And uh, the only one it has to please is you. Maybe even put some clouds in the sky. Not that you'd be really be able to see clouds. Oh, look at that. I can blend it with my fingers. It's like finger painting. Oh, fun. All right, well, there you have it. The brand new paper from Rocks, available at greensneakers.com. Check out 
the link below for more information if you want to see how you can get your hands on some of this. Maybe even before everybody else. Ooh, you can be in the club. Um, I don't know about that, but... <laughs> All right, there you have it. Thank you so much for watching. Thumbs up and subscribe if you like this video. And until next time, happy crafting.